A D C O R in D H exam. Today I have made this video to make you understand the concepts of occlusion. Let us try to dig in the concepts and what are most important here. First of all, we should know what is the definition of occlusion. Occlusion is defined as any contact between the incising or the masticating surfaces of the maxillary or the mandibular teeth. Another term is dental articulation for the occlusion, which deals with the relationship between the maxillary and the mandibular teeth. First of all, when we start with the occlusion, the most important concept you should understand is what is centric relation and what is centric occlusion. First of all, students, you should know that centric relation is independent of the tooth contact. So, centric relation is a ligament guided position. It's a maxillomandibular relationship that is independent of the tooth contact in which the condyles, they're articulating in the most enterosuperior position against the posterior slope of the articular eminence. That is the definition of centric relation. Now, centric relation is a position that is most repeatable, most reproducible. And that's the reason in a complete denture patient who doesn't have teeth for several years, he cannot bite in centric occlusion or maximum intercuspation, but we can always try to reproduce centric relation and then we coincide centric occlusion with centric relation. That means we take bite in centric relation in the complete denture patients. As we were talking about centric occlusion, so let us see what is centric occlusion. So centric occlusion is a maximum intercuspation position. It's a tooth guided position. The occlusion of the opposing teeth when the mandible is in centric relation, this may or may not coincide with the maximum intercuspal position. Now let us try to understand the concept of the working side and the non-working side. Working side students is a side towards which the mandible is moving. For example, I'm moving the mandible towards the right side, so right side becomes a working side. And the other side from which the mandible is moving towards the working side. So that side, left side becomes the non-working side. Non-working side is a side which moves towards the tongue. It's a mediotrusive side, non-working side or the balancing side. And the other side, that's your right side, that's your working side, it is going to move towards the cheek. And that is called as a latrotrusive side. That's a working side for you. Now you can see the picture here, right? This is the working side towards which your mandible is moving, let's say in this picture towards the right and left one, the other side will be the non-working side or balancing side. Always remember non-working side is towards the tongue and the working side is towards the cheek, also called as a latrotrusive side. You can see the picture here, how the mandible is moving towards the mediotrusive side or towards the latrotrusive side. Now let us see what are the different types of complete denture occlusion we have. We have the balanced occlusion. So balanced occlusion can be unilateral balanced or bilateral balanced. Then you have the monoplane occlusion and you have the lingualized occlusion. So these are the three most common type of occlusions we have. Let us try to understand first what is balanced occlusion. So balanced occlusion is defined as the simultaneous contact of the maxillary and the mandibular teeth on the right and the left and the posterior and the interior occlusal areas in the centric and the eccentric position developed to lessen or limit tipping or rotation of the denture basis in relation to supporting structure. In balanced occlusion, there should be a three point contact, usually one interior and two posterior contact, which may not be sufficient for the balanced occlusion. Instead, there should be simultaneous contact of all the teeth together, both on the balancing side and working and the non-working side. Let us try to understand what are the characteristic requirements of the balanced occlusion. First of all, all the teeth on the working side from central incisor to the second molar should glide evenly against the opposing teeth. No single tooth should produce any interference or premature contact or disocclusion of the other teeth. There should be contacts on the balancing side, but they should not interfere with the smooth gliding movement on the working side. And there should be simultaneous contact during protrusion. General consideration for balanced occlusion is idle balanced occlusion can be achieved in cases when you have wide, large ridges in complete denture, when the teeth are very arranged close to the ridge. And the complete denture teeth have teeth arranged away from the ridge. And those that rest on narrow and short ridges will have a poor balanced occlusion. Teeth that have narrow buccolingual width and those that rest on the wide ridges actually provide idle balanced occlusion. The complete denture you are designing in such a way that the forces of occlusion are centered anteroposteriorly on the denture 
and the ideal balance can be achieved by arranging the teeth slightly on the lingual side of the crest of the ridge. The types of balanced occlusion we have is unilateral balanced occlusion, bilateral balanced occlusion, protrusive balanced occlusion, lateral balanced occlusion. So the most important we have is the unilateral and the bilateral. Let us understand this. So unilateral balanced occlusion, actually we don't follow during the complete denture patients. It is more pertained to the FPDs. While the bilateral balanced occlusion is the one that is your ideal goal for the complete denture. This occlusion will help you to distribute the occlusal load evenly across the arch. So this bilateral balanced occlusion where the teeth are contacting evenly both on the working and the non-working side during the centric and the eccentric movement, it will help to improve the stability of the denture during centric, eccentric or parafunctional movement. This bilateral balance occlusion is going to limit the rotation and tipping of your denture. Now the protrusive balance occlusion is present when the mandible moves in a forward or protrusive direction and the occlusal contact are smooth and simultaneous anterior and posteriorly. While the lateral balanced occlusion is minimal simultaneous three-point contact present during lateral movement of the mandible. What are the advantages of balanced occlusion? Of course, with the balanced occlusion, we have better distribution of load, we have stability, reduced trauma, functional movement is better, better efficiency and more comfortable to the patient. Now we are coming to a very important topic. It is called as Hanau's quint. The factors that influence the balanced occlusion are under the laws of articulation. Hanau's quint is still considered as the basic determinant of the balanced occlusion. So there are five basic factors that determine the balanced occlusion. They are the incisal guidance, inclination of the condylar path or the condylar guidance, then the orientation of the plane of occlusion, cuspal angulation and the compensating curve. All these factors, they are under your control except the condylar guidance which is completely under the patient TMJ anatomy that you cannot modify. Let us try to understand now what is condylar guidance, what is condylar angle. The inclination of the condylar path is the angle formed by imaginary horizontal line at the superior head of condyle and the path the condyle will pass during the function. 